Hello. You're watching Tell It Like It Is with public officials, and my name is Kathy Benick. Well, you know, here we are, just literally one week before Christmas. I can't believe it. So I'd like to watch all, like to wish, I'm sorry, all of you who are watching a very, very happy, healthy, and peaceful Christmas. And to those of you who have, who have already celebrated Hanukkah, please accept my belated wishes for your happiness, health, and um, peace as well. Well, you know, we're within days of the start of 2014, which is not to be believed by me at least. And that means that very, very soon, New Hampshire state legislators will be returning to Concord for the second part of the biennial session. And we know for sure that there'll be at least, at a minimum, three contentious issues for which battle lines have already been drawn. All three are tied to the state finances. Now, you know, we all hear a lot about state finances constantly, every legislative session and in between as well. And the fact is that it really does cost a massive amount of money to run our state's government. Do we as private citizens truly understand the state budget? I'm guessing we think we do, but we really don't. Is it true that we really are living within a bare bones budget right now that, that some charge has really cruelly cut needed programs and services and has reduced the quality of life in New Hampshire and deprived us of wanted and necessary programs? Or is it true that dis in despite of cuts the past couple of years, we still see government waste, we still see inefficiencies, we still see indefensible duplication of services, and we still see our money going to pay for things that are I think, clearly unnecessary and provide nothing that benefits all of us and does nothing to convince us that our money is indeed being used correctly. You know, on the one hand, we hear that there's not enough money to complete big things like big transportation projects like Interstate 93. But then on the other hand, we see hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent on yet more studies of expanding Massachusetts commuter rail into Nashua and beyond. Clearly not a benefit to the entire state. On the one hand, we hear that we must spend more on education, but then on the other hand, our collective blood pressures spike when we read news accounts about things like the UNH system spending millions of dollars on things like new logos, athletic field lighting, and paying professors for lengthy sabbaticals during which they never enter a classroom. A things out of whack is the current state budget process obsolete and leave plenty of loopholes through which there continues to be unnecessary spending even with all of the budget cuts? Are New Hampshire legislators truly provided with enough legitimate budget information to understand what is truly essential? What is the fluff that works its way into departments and agencies funding and what legislators can and should do to force accountability for how our money, our money, is spent. Well, my guest today is going to talk about all of that, and he's going to talk about legislation that he has filed for 2014 that is intended to put us on a path to a fiscally sound budget that has no smoke and mirrors. Wouldn't that be a switch? So, my, my, my guest today is somebody who I think at least everybody in Bedford knows, and probably the viewers from outside of Bedford have become familiar with him as well. And he is Representative John Sabrowski. He was elected to the New Hampshire House of Representatives in 2008 and was successfully and handily um, re-elected in both 2010 and 2012. He served on the House Health and Human Services and Elderly Affairs Committee, a mouthful, the House Finance Committee, has served as Vice Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee and also Vice Chairman of the Constitutional Review Committee. John has a degree in electrical engineering from the Rochester Institute of Technology, a degree in industrial design from the Rhode Island School of Design, and also a master's degree in marketing management from the Kellogg School of Northwestern University. He's a proud veteran of the U.S. Marine Corps, where he achieved the rank of captain, and a lot of you may not know that he was an A-4E jet attack pilot 
Um, and among his service uh, years, he spent 1965 through 1967 in Vietnam. His professional experience is huge. Um, all kinds of management experience that includes stints at Digital Equipment Corporation, Xerox Corporation, U.S. Surgical Corporation, General Electric Medical Systems, the Solarex Corporation, um, Sales Builders Inc., an international consulting firm where he served as president, the Thomas Group Inc., the Highland Group, and Boston University, where he was director of affiliate network of the BU Corporate Education Center. And he's even been a professor at Southern New Hampshire University, a professor in the School of Business. In addition to his public service as a state legislator, he also has a lot of other public service. He served on the Citizens Democracy Corps, a U.S. agency for international development initiative to help the countries of Eastern and Central Europe and the former Soviet Union countries to transition from centrally planned economies to market-driven economies. And in 1996, he spent three months as a management consultant to a Warsaw, Poland wholesale distributor company of high-tech laboratory equipment. And from 1990 to 1999, he served on the U.S. Department of Commerce, Maryland, D.C., and Virginia District Export Councils, and also served as the chairman of the Virginia Export Assistance Committee. And during that time period, he also organized and led a U.S. environmental project product, I'm sorry, trade delegation to Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. So clearly, lots of management experience. If that's not enough, in his spare time, he teaches and coaches U.S. State Department personnel who support American business people. He teaches and coaches U.S. Commerce Department personnel who are engaged in export counseling, promotion, and support programs. And he's also a regular and frequent featured speaker at the East-West International Trade Conference in Nashville, Tennessee. But I'm not done. He's also a book That's author <laughs> um, and, a, and an article writer. His professional articles have appeared in such prestigious professional magazines as Executive Excellence, Sales and Marketing Strategies and News, Journal of Business and Industrial Marketing, Journal of Commerce, International Business and Marketing News. And I said he was a book publisher, uh, a book author, I should say. In 1998, a hugely well-known firm of Prentice Hall published his book, The Sales Manager's Troubleshooter. And that book was actually named one of the top 10 must-reads of 1998 by Sales and Marketing Management Magazine. And in 2001, his book, The Attack of the Mustard Seed, was published. I'd love to know the reason for that title, by the way. Um, which detailed the 10 essentials of success for leading a team or an organization responsible for revenue generation. John and his wife Amanda live in Bedford. I know a lot of you know them. Um, they've been here for 10 years. They're very active in a number of community organizations and events. They've got four ground kids and 11 grandchildren. And John is also very active um, in groups like the Knights of Columbus, the Veterans of Foreign War, the Bedford Men's Club. And for those of you who watched the show that actually is running right now about the Bedford Men's Club Christmas tree, you'll see me talking to him on the day that they were unloading trees when he looked a whole lot different than he looks today. <laughs> With no further you, ado, I... Welcome you, John. Wow. I'll tell you, that's a resume. Wow, that's a, that's an introduction. <laughs> Kathy, thank you so so very, very, very much. Well, you're very welcome. <coughs> you know, very kind. I, I have quite a celebrity no, here. Very, no, not really. And very you didn't even bring happy, signed happy books here. for me. I can't Well, I can it. do that. I'm I, a big reader and I have I, a big library. I, I can do that for you. You know, Jerry and I have collected many Is first right? edition I love autographed to, by the author to yes, us yes. with a date and where they met us and everything. So, I mean, that would be a great No, I love, I love to write. Yeah, I write. guess. Yes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, you are one busy guy, and yet you have found um, time this year, or during 2013, to put together a, a kind of sweeping piece of legislation called House Bill 657. So the first thing I'd like you to do is tell us about House 657, and then kind of part two of that question sure. is, as part of telling us about it, to describe the budget process to us, because as I understand it, the budget process in New Hampshire is a five-part deal that starts 
in the odd numbered year and ends halfway through the next even numbered year. So if I'm correct, that would put us right now in December 2013 in phase two or five. Well, it, it's just it's, it's so just a little bit the, the, all right. the opposite there. It's uh, even odd rather than odd. Oh, all right. Than odd, well, odd well, see, well, let me give you a little already. little bit of back a little Absolutely. bit of back background a uh, little bit of background here uh, on the on the on on the subject. Um, yes, this stems from uh, my experience uh, on the on the finance committee okay. and uh, my business experience leading organizations where I had the responsibility for uh, budget creation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and, budget man and budget management. As you so eloquently said in, in the opening, uh, the state of New Hampshire is a huge enterprise mm -hmm. from, a, from a fiscal perspective. And uh, our budget on a biennial, biennial basis, total dollars, federal funds, general funds, and, and other funds, is approximately $10.7 billion. Billion with a B. Billion with a B. That's big bucks. And out of that, uh, two point seven, approximately two point seven, is a general fund. So that's uh, that's a lot to that's a lot to manage. Yes. And uh, the citizens of Bedford and throughout New Hampshire, frankly, should be very proud of the way that's the way that's managed. Uh, as I've watched, you know, the budget process unfold in the last uh, in, the in the last few years, I can say I'm generally pleased with the uh, with the scrutiny. That mm -hmm. the whole process uh, un undergoes, and the uh, and the participation of the fi Senate uh, Finance Committee, the House Finance Committee, the Governor, the Budget Directors, the, the Office of the Legislative Budget Assistant, uh, folks, we really should be proud of the way we ha we handle our money. And as you know, we end every every two years with a balanced with a balanced budget or something very 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 close to it. Well, one thing that I, well, before I get into the, into the bill itself, I should say that our budget process is, as you well said, a five-step five process, Kathy, and it begins in the even year, every, okay. every even year. So in 2014, we will start another, uh, an, an, another cycle, and it begins in the May-June time frame when all the agencies and, and departments uh, put together uh, their requests mm -hmm. for the ensuing for the ensuing two years. It is a very, very uh, time and, and, and talent intensive process. Now, at this point, is this when they put their pie in the sky things in there too? Well, it's not really. I wouldn't call it pie in the sky. But what they're asked to do by the current statute is create what is called. A maintenance budget submission. Okay. In other words, put forward to the governor those funds which they believe they will need to provide the same level of service authorized and funded in the preceding fiscal year. Okay. Maintenance. How much will it cost the state to maintain what it has been doing, what okay. that department has been doing? In other words, the same old, same old, same old. Okay. That's not the most effective way to, to really make things happen. But I'll, I'm going to I'm going to come back to that okay. because my bill relates to that. But that's the first the first phase of the project of the of the process. The departments and the agencies create that budget and then get it into the governor in the fall. The governor sits down with each agency and department head and then crafts the governor's budget. Mm -hmm. That also is very, very time consuming. Uh, takes, it takes a lot of time to do, it takes a lot of time to do that. And by February 15th, the governor is required to present that budget to a joint session of the House and the Senate. That begins phase three. The House Finance Committee then begins to meet with each of the departments and agencies and in great detail line by line, go through what it is they're asking for and why, the, why they're asking for it. Making changes where they want to or where it's, where, where it's appropriate, it's a lot of give and take. It's, a, it's an awful lot of work on the part of the departments or part of the agencies and on the part of the, part of the finance committee. The House Finance Committee then passes, recommends uh, a, a, a budget that goes to the full House for a vote. Mm -hmm. It passes the House 
it then moves on to the Senate right. for phase four. Right. And it starts all over again, basically. And the Senate brings in all the departments and all the agencies using the governor's budget as a guideline, using what the House has done, and now creates its own version of what it thinks the state budget should be. Now, how up and at this that, point, how much does partisan politics play in this whole oh, scenario? Quite a, oh, quite a bit. Continuous? Quite a bit, as, 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 quite a bit as, you would, as, as you would expect. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it really does. After the Senate is done, then, because it never agrees, the House and the Senate never, will never agree. There's always going to be you something. Guys just can't get along. There's always going to be something that they don't agree on. So True. then, phase five or the fifth step is a committee of conference, mm -hmm. where three to five members of the House and Senate Finance Committees get together, hammer this thing out, mm -hmm. and re try and reconcile differences, and then bring it back to both chambers, to the Senate and the House, to finally pass a budget to give to the governor to sign. Now, the governor at this point can sign, can sign it mm -hmm. if he or she approves it, or can just let it become law by, by, not, by not signing okay. it. Okay, but the governor so, can't change at that point anything? No, it's pretty much, it's pretty much done at this, pretty much done at that, at that, at that point. Okay, but so I'm assuming goes, the governor through the whole process is kind of throwing out oh, hints watch, what he watching or she it, wants. Watching it very carefully, uh, the, uh, the budget director, uh, mm -hmm. who reports to the boards of the governor is watching this process unfold and uh, knows I exactly what is exactly what what's happening hmm. so it takes the whole process takes about it takes about a year from start to finish because mm -hmm. assuming we're going to be starting this again in may june of 2014 mm -hmm. it's not going to reach conclusion until the end of June in 2015. So when, I bet when you're it's talking billions of dollars, it should take a long it time. It should, really, it you know? should. And I come back to the, my, my earlier point that uh, we do a very good job, I believe, of really scrutinizing you know, all, the, all the details in, in here. And those budgets are based on revenue estimates, mm -hmm. which both the House and the Senate uh, Ways and Means Committee develop and we follow those, you know, pretty closely, as you might expect. Mm -hmm. uh, Republican-led Ways and Means Committee tend to be a little bit more conservative. Mm -hmm. Democratic ones tend to be, you know, loaded up a little bit more, so to, you know, so to speak. And so, the governor herself or himself also bases their budget on a revenue estimate. So having said that, yes. how could we see something going on like Governor Hassam? putting forth a budget that was, for all intents and purposes, going to be dependent on expanded gambling revenues. That was an, that was an incredibly unusual move on, on her part. And well, many, many, of us, many of us uh, in the legislature <coughs> were quite surprised that, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that that occurred. Uh, this, is a, this, is a very laborious, this is a very laborious process. And my interest in it, and, and the bill that we're, we're talking about here, House Bill 657, addresses the first phase, the agency phase mm -hmm. of, the, of the process, which is called a maintenance budget. And this is when those, I, I think last year it was like hundreds of pages, wasn't it? Oh, of all the different oh line my items. gosh, it's, it's, a, it's a book, you know, <coughs> I'm sorry. You, know, you, know, you know, like that. But uh, so what House Bill 657 is attempting to do <coughs> is to change or modify the culture associated with that first phase, with the agency phase. And rather than having the agencies and departments submit a budget to the governor that will provide the same level of service authorized and funded in the preceding fiscal year, now we're trying to have them provide the cost of providing an improved quality of services as a result of improved department efficiencies. Thus, we're change, House Bill 657 is repealing the maintenance budget and putting in place an efficiency budget. Okay. An that's... efficiency. So th think differently. The, yeah. the, whole, the whole idea is to change the thought process, mm -hmm. change the basic thought process and the culture of the state. Rather than starting with maintenance, same mm -hmm. old, same old, let's think efficiency, mm -hmm. ingenuity, innovation. How can we do things better? How can we get more, you know, out of the monies, you know, that we that, that we are appropriating? Let's be more creative. Now, it's it's important to say that there are some departments and agencies 
who do do that. Already? Do that, already do yeah. that. Do you want to point to yes, I Yes, I, yes, I can. I can think of, uh, you know, the Department of Motor Vehicles, for example, that has automated a number of its processes. Mm -hmm. I can think of uh, the Department of Revenue Administration that has done a great job of automating a lot of its processes. I can think of the Department of Transportation <coughs> that has put in place uh, a management tool called Balanced Scorecard, uh, which enables the department to better identify goals, objectives, measures, you know, and performance associated mm -hmm. with how it, it does its work. So we do see some initiatives come up, but I would characterize them more as ad, ad hoc. It's not systemic. The entire culture of, this, of the state government does not yet do that. Can you identify or do you want to identify any department or agencies that aren't doing it that really need to be? Uh, no, I don't think I, I don't think, we, you know, we, we, I think we stage. need to do that. The one I would okay. like to add to the list I gave you, though, is I was really pleased a couple of years ago to see the uh, judicial branch uh, launch a, uh, an innovation commission or an innovation committee to try and improve their processes. And I think they did a superb job. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my view, that's a very well-managed uh, department, uh, department of the state. But it's ad hoc, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's sporadic, it's not mm -hmm. all over the place. So what House Bill 657 is attempting to do is to raise mm -hmm. all of the agencies and all of the departments, of which there are about 45 or 46 that mm -hmm. have to submit budgets to, to the governor. 45, 46, that doesn't seem that's a lot. lot. Yeah, that is that, a lot. That's a lot. So let's think a little bit differently about how we go about, mm -hmm. you know, run, run, running, running the business. I think it was, if I can just, you know, uh, give you a simple quote from a, um, a budget instruction letter that Governor Lynch sent to all departments and agencies uh, back in 2012. And he said, we must continue to exercise <coughs> vigilance, ingenuity, and new ways to do more with less, end quote. And that's true. Mm -hmm. Uh, Governor Hassan uh, this year, I think to her credit, has launched an innovation commission uh, to try and move the state forward to thinking a little bit more creatively about the way it does things and the processes in place, you know, to, uh, you know, to, 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 run, to run the state. So we're starting to move in, the, in, in, in this direction. So what we've tried to do here with House Bill 657 is take one, one element mm -hmm. of state government, and that is the very first phase of the very important budget process and change the culture of it and enable and mandate, frankly, to the departments and agencies that they come forward with better and more useful information to the governor and to both House and Senate finance. And I can give you, <coughs> give you some examples of that. Uh, several of the things that the bill uh, asks for from agency and department heads are, what's your mission statement? Mm -hmm. What are your goals and objectives? Do you have any special or problematic needs in your, in your department? How are you measuring yourself? How do you plan Which on measuring important. yourself in the future? Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity for any reorganization or restructuring to make the department work a little better or smoother? How about technology? Are there any technology investments you'd like to make? Mm -hmm in order to improve efficiencies mm -hmm. in, 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 in customer service. How about processes, process innovation? Are there any processes you're working on to try and make, thing, make things better? What are they? How about staff training and staff development? What can be done there? What are you doing there to try and improve efficiencies in state government? How about barriers to performance? Are there any barriers in terms of existing statutes or existing administrative rules that are getting in the way, you know, that are hindering you from doing what, you, what really can, can be done. All this information, what, all these, these things are not being asked for now. No, they're not comprehensive no, now. No, no. But put yourself, Kathy, put yourself in the, in the role of, of being the CEO mm -hmm. of a $10.7 billion corporation. Those questions would be asked. And and if you had 46, 45, <coughs> eight, you know, me. departments reporting to you, and you were putting together a budget every couple of years for your, for your corporation that you were going to carry forward to your board of directors, wouldn't it be helpful to you to know yeah, answers to those? Absolutely. Because you've got decisions to make. Yeah. 
just like uh, you know the governor has uh, has decisions to make and legislators and the legislators where's the best place to put the money mm -hmm. where's the best place to put the money mm -hmm. so if you start the process with a more useful work product mm -hmm. you know that this efficiency budget in, in total being a work product if you start with the best possible information there at the first step of you know the budget process Think about how that can cascade throughout step two, right. three, right. four, and then on to the committee of conference. Right. Wow! Yeah, I mean, huge. there is really, yeah, huge. Huge really an opportunity, yeah. you know, for the state to better spend the money that it has available to it. And then here's the kicker. Here's the kicker, because I know what's going to happen, because I've seen this happen in, in, in business. There are a lot of little programs and a lot of things that I think all legislators would like to see happen. Mm -hmm. They would favorite pet projects. Oh, absolutely. I, I've got a couple. Yeah, yeah. I'm I've sure got a do. couple. Yeah. I do. Yeah. You know. I'm sure. Now, if everybody operates more efficiently, guess what? Mm -hmm. You're always going to find a little bit extra on the table that can be used to fund some of those same projects. Yeah, they're not or, being funded now. Or if not fund yeah. them, put yeah. them into the rainy day fund, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Is not something that's really healthy no, today. No, I know that. I know that. So change the culture of the state. Now, I, I'm going to ask you a, a, just kind of a practical sure. question. But before I do, I'm so sorry for the, the yes. hacking I'm doing, the aftermath of the cold, you know, when you get that dry you yep. throat yep. and least expect it to act up, it does. But then the other thing, too, is um, um, I don't know if you're hearing it, but I don't want it to um, divert attention away from what you're saying. I'm, I keep hearing a beeping. And I don't know if I'm just picking up on a sound that the audience can hear or not. So I guess if anybody's in the control room who can close the door or whatever, so we're not hearing that beeping, because, again, I don't want it to okay. divert attention. Okay. Or maybe it's just a beeping in my head. You know, no, maybe, not, maybe I, the I'm, people in outer I space think, are communicating that, I'm not, with I'm not me. hearing anything, Kathy. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my, my question is this. Now, obviously... You know, it takes a while for any bill to make it through the whole legislative process, and a lot of them don't get yes, decided until the, yes, the waning does. days. Right, right. Um, and everybody's on tenterhooks right. if it's an important one. But let's take a best case scenario right. that your bill, you know, pops in there in January and committees and people and, and act on it right away. It yep. goes to a House vote, it goes to a Senate vote, it gets the governor's signature. Would that have any impact on the budget that's in the process right now, or um, will its provisions kick in the next time out when the budget process starts? Uh, the provisions will kick in uh, the next time. The next time, okay. And the reason for that is uh, is simple. I've worked very, very closely mm -hmm. with the uh, Department of Administrative Services on, okay. on this, and they uh, have a huge role to play in the, in the oh, process. Oh, sure, yeah. They have been very, 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 very supportive. But it takes time for them to put in place all the forms and processes and, the, and well, mod mod true. modify yeah. the, the, the computer system to, uh, you know, to make this, you know, yeah, to, to, that's to make this happen. So uh, it, it's, it's looking pretty good right now. The bill actually uh, was filed uh, early this year. Mm -hmm. and, and you already had some committee yes, hearings and we, on it, correct? Yes, and we ret we, okay. the finance, House Finance Committee retained it uh, in the early spring okay. uh, because we were in the midst of, of working on the budget. Yes. We brought it yeah. back here in the fall. Uh, I made one minor amendment to it, mm -hmm. and it passed the House Finance Committee on a bipartisan. This is a bipartisan, mm -hmm. twenty-one to nothing vote. Wow! So it will come to that doesn't happen often. Not too <laughs> often. <laughs> no, no, not too often. <laughs> no, but uh, really. <laughs> you know, great bipartisan support. Mm -hmm. Governor Hassan, you know, supports it. Uh, the Republican leadership supports it. Uh, so now it'll go to the full House for a vote uh, early two thousand fourteen. And then it'll go to Hopefully. This. It won't get stalled into late in the uh, session, yeah, right? No, I don't think so. Okay. And it's likely to come through the House fine. And then it'll go to the, go to the Senate. Okay. And we'll start the process. And it'll probably do pretty well in the, in the Senate, I would think. And then go to the governor. There is uh, one important element of this that I haven't, that I haven't mentioned yet, which um, is, uh, is, is key. Um, right now, the way the first stage of the budget process works, there's also a statute in place, <coughs> excuse me, that asks for a 10% uh, 
budget reduction budget also, along with so they have the to agency do, two, submit two, two, two different documents. Two. A lot of work. Wow. A lot. Of, and that second budget. So then, what, I mean, in, in the most simple terms, you're asking the department heads, agency heads, to decide which baby it is to throw out with the bathwater? Yeah, I know. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, wow. and quite frankly, uh, it doesn't get much attention. It doesn't. Uh, it, it doesn't. Just doesn't get much attention. It doesn't get much much thought, and there really isn't much value to it because the governor is really working off of that initial initial mm -hmm. submission. Now, so then why I, do they even go well, through that process? I mean, it almost seems like a yeah, waste we, of time we, if it doesn't we, make a difference. We really shouldn't. Now, I'm I'm the guilty party here. Okay, you are? I'm the guilty party. <laughs> here. Well, in my first confession, yeah, time. I really am. In, in the uh, in my first term, when I was in health and human services, yeah. being being interested in process process management and, and fiscal matters in the, in the budget, I put forward a bill that, uh, that required uh, the agencies and departments to put forward a bill with a uh, a second a second one a second uh, budget submission ah, of a three okay. to ten a three to ten percent reduction. Okay, to try and in an attempt. Uh, to um, uh, let's say get a you know manage the fiscal affairs of the state a little bit a little bit a little bit more tightly. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it failed. Fortunately, it failed. Uh, you know, you'll, and usually, he'll let I know. Say that. I, ad mm -hmm. I admit, in hindsight, it was a good thing that it, it good thing good thing that it failed. But then another legislator brought it back uh, in the ensuing okay. biennium, and it passed. But uh, you know. Now, did you vote for it that time? No, I did not. You did not. Okay. I did not because I was in fine. And what I learned is that the governor has tremendous flexibility. Mm -hmm. Has tremendous flexibility in requesting from uh, the departments and agencies what that initial submission should look like. For example, in this past submission, Governor Hassan asked for a 97 percent submission in the maintenance budget. Okay, she mm -hmm. asked for something a little bit less than what was spent in the past. Now that's not unusual, mm -hmm. because Governor Lynch had done that in the past. Governor Benson had also done that in the past. So there has been this history, if you will, mm -hmm. of asking for a reduced level of, of spending. So there's a, a a good fiscal good fiscal sense here, but that's a lot more work. Well, so what yeah. six fifty what this bill does what six fifty seven does it gives the uh, uh, the governor, the flexibility from the very beginning to ask or su suggest, I should, no, not suggest, ask each department to come forward with a budget of, as a percentage mm -hmm. of what their previously approved or authorized budget was. Change, and the reason for this is, is simple, because the needs of different departments and agencies can vary over time. Well, Things yeah. can happen. Yeah. So that one well, health and human services would probably be a health, prime example. Health and human yeah. services, uh, because of things yeah. going on in the environment, yeah. may need more money. So the, the yeah. so the governor can go to the yeah. commissioner there and say, Commissioner, I'd like you to come forward with a budget that was uh, is 102 percent or 103 mm percent -hmm. of your previous approved budget. Could go to another department and ask for a little bit less. Mm -hmm to another for a little bit more, to another for a little bit less, depending upon the needs that the governor sees you know, in, 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 in the state. And you have to remember the governor, whoever it may be, will be campaigning on different matters well, which that, true, that, yeah. that he or she thinks yeah. are, are priorities. So here's an, op here's, an opportunity for the, uh, here's an opportunity for the governor to set a target for each department or agency. Now, I think it's very, very safe to say that your legislation will be supported by Republicans. And, and you indicated that, you know, thus far there has been a showing of some bipartisan support. Thus far, Governor Hassan seems to be on board with a good part of it. Oh, she is. Yes. Do you expect any opposition from either the governor, from any of the, the Democrats, Democratic legislators, or from department and agency heads. Um, I mean, what kind of opposition do you think possibly you might get from any of those folks? That's a good. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. Not pie in the <laughs> sky, huh? No. All right. Uh, 
I don't think there'll be any. Uh, I don't think there'll be any objection or pushback from the department or agency heads. You don't. No, because, you know, I started working on this. My gosh, I think about five about five years ago, and I went out and I interviewed, oh, I think about twelve to fifteen different department and agency heads and asked them their opinion, how they felt mm -hmm. about the worthiness, the value of that uh, maintenance budget submission. Mm -hmm. And with only one exception, uh, they weren't happy with the way the process was running. They, they felt that what they were creating was not, was not a useful work product for the governor or for House and, and, and Senate, Senate finance. So I think they're going to be pretty, I think they're going to be pretty supportive because now this is going to help them. They're coming forward with information which is going to be more useful for them, more useful for the governor, more useful for the legislature. But where I may get a little bit of pushback is from those legislators, either Republican or Democrat, who may feel that there is still some value in asking for that second 10 percent reduction budget. Mm -hmm. There may be so there may be a little there. But now, but I mean, in politics, you know, in government in general, proposed changes can be really hard to bring about because as you know the, the process moves on people start defending their turfs and I mean and tr truthfully change can some mean that some apple carts are going to get toppled right so you know knowing that that's a potential yes kind of barrier along the right. way what would be the message that you'd be able to convey to the department and agency heads to stay on board and not start, I guess, getting protective of their turf, so to speak. Well, I think because I, you know, talking yes. about an idea is one thing, right. but talking about a a new reality coming at them like a freight train might right. be something else. Well, this is going to be beneficial to them. Okay. This is going to be beneficial to them because now uh, this opens the door for them, so to speak, to come forward with some of their real needs. And to document those needs and those needs real well, they'll be able to come forward with a stronger story to support why they need X amount of dollars here or X amount of dollars there. So I, I think they're going to feel pretty good about that. You don't the think change, they'll feel like they're putting any programs in jeopardy? Uh, no, huh? no, I don't think so. I think that I think that the change, uh, most of the change or the challenge of change. Uh, is going to lie with the Department of Administrative Services in uh, preparing the forms, the computer system that's used in, in, in budget management, in making in making that happen. But they so will there be resistance been, from those folks? No, no, I no. don't believe they've been pretty supportive, uh, you know, so so far, and uh, uh, they have asked for appropriate time in order to make to make those changes. Uh, that's why, as you asked me earlier, when will this when would this go that into effect? This in one right or the away. next one? No, let's let's do it right. Mm -hmm. Let's do it right. Mm -hmm. Let's give DAS, uh, the Department of Administrative Services, time to to get their to get their act together there. Hmm. This is going to be now. One of the things now, because yes. again, and I think it can be confusing because even right. when I read the legislation, yes, I there were a couple of different parts because legislation are like legal right. documents anyway. Right. Um, you, right. you kind of look at them and you go, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I don't know that everybody like really, or uh, could be just me, but I'm, I'm thinking that maybe some of the viewers, they're hearing you talk about the maintenance budget versus an efficiency budget, yes. and it, it can sound a little confusing. So if you like basically were, let's say you were doing a quick radio interview, you know, where you only got the three or four minutes to bang your point across right. um, during the news segment or something, if you had to summarize a maintenance budget and an efficiency budget in just a, a couple of sentences, what would be the, the major point that you would use so that somebody listening would go, aha, I've got it, now I understand the difference between the two of them? Okay, an efficiency budget features innovation, ingenuity, creativity, better customer service, a better way to do things, a way to get more done with less, more satisfaction for the citizens of New Hampshire. Okay. Moving the state forward. Okay. Maintenance, same, 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 the way we've always done things, over and over and over again. 
you know, when I first started working on this, I went to the Office of Legislative Research and I asked, when was the first time this appeared in the New Hampshire statutes, this maintenance idea, this maintenance concept? And it's, it, it, it's amazing. It first appeared back in the Herbert Hoover administration. <laughs> a few years ago? Now, that's just a few years ago, right, Kathy? <laughs> that's before my time. Yeah. I know it's before your time. Oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, don't you think, don't you really think it's time for the state to, to really move forward mm. huh? mm -hmm. and, and, and begin doing things in a more, uh, in a more creative, uh, in, in an innovative way? Well, I mean, we, we have heard, and, and certainly last year when we were doing the, the whole series on candidates, right. you know, and we had the candidates for governor right. and governor's council right. and, and so on and so forth in here, the state senate and such. I mean, over and over and over and over and over again, I, I would say almost to a number, the hue and cry of everybody was there has to be more efficiency. There Ava, has to be yes. less duplication yes. of yes. services within agencies. Yes. There, there has to be some sharing of responsibilities so that we don't have duplicate services yes. happening across several departments or our personnel performing duplicate right. duties across several departments and such. Well, you know, so, what's, gonna, you know I mean, what's gonna happen here? We get this, this engine, this, uh, this innovation, this creativity, this efficiency mm -hmm. engine going. These department and agency heads talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would think they would. You know, yeah. I would they, hope they, they would. They talk to each other, and yeah. you know, they meet regularly. Mm -hmm. You know, amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it is on a monthly basis. I know I've been invited to speak uh, once or twice at, uh, at at one of those meetings. They share. They, they, there's there's a forum there. There's a venue for them to share. So already, and I, I've I've seen this. They know, you know, what different. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, agencies, departments are doing. So this is gonna feed on itself. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be some synergy here. So if Department of Health and Human Services comes up with an idea or a better way to do something or to restructure itself or do something in a more efficient mm -hmm. manner, you better believe, you know, that the other department heads are gonna catch wind of that or the commissioner himself is Oh, gonna... it would make sense for them to. Oh. I mean, if they wanna survive and prosper. Yes, yes. It, and it this would is, certainly makes sense. And this is, you know, what, we, what we've got here and, and what this bill is, is, is doing mm -hmm. is nothing different than what goes on in the corporate world, in the business world, mm -hmm. every day. Uh, in order to be successful. Yeah, and there's a disconnect yes. now between government yes. way of doing things and, and, and business way of doing things. And in things, order to yeah. be successful in the yeah. corporate world, and I, I spent my, my whole change co career is constant. there. Change is constant. Yeah. You're always looking for that competitive... Yeah. That competitive yeah, invention. You You're always yeah. looking for the way to, you know, get more out of, mm -hmm. out of, out of, out of what you've got, and we're competing with other states. Mm -hmm. We're competing with other states, so we've got to make ourselves stronger. So this will help make, I believe, will help make uh, New Hampshire a, 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 a more attractive destination, you know, for business and industry uh, to uh, to come here. So uh, this is going to feed on itself. A lot of a lot of a lot of synergy here. A whole new way of thinking. Mm. A whole new culture. Mm -hmm. What can we do new? How can we do this better? You know, and so this is going to work its way down in, into every into every organization. Everybody start thinking this way. Uh, we're probably not going to get, you know, absolutely tremendous results right off the bat. But it's a process over a period of a year, two years, three years, four years. You watch. Everyone will start to be thinking differently. How long do you think it would take for this to kind of fully kick in? Uh, two to three years. Two to three. Two to three. Uh, two to three years. Yeah. But it would happen yeah. with the next budget. Begin yeah, to start. It was, it was, it's, yes, and you know, again, some of this is already underway, but it's ad hoc. Well, yeah. It's not systemic. It's yeah. Not, it's yeah. not the whole. But I mean, officially, the whole state it would and, start with the next budget. Oh yeah. To a yes. degree. Yes. You know they. And then get know, more they, refined they, as they, it goes and along. Everyone. Is know. that going to be kind of like a working document, so to speak? No, that changes. No, no, it's not a working document. It's just the way you run your run your department or run run your agency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think mm. creatively. Think out of the box. Mm -hmm. How can you do this differently? You know that's been, you know that's been going on to some extent. And again, <laughs> I come back to uh, to the judicial branch and, and some of the innovations that they've uh, they've uh, put in place. Um, now, just like kind of jumping know. ahead now, because I like to yes. weave. I like to right. weave future stories. Go right ahead. 
say, for instance, okay, that. Maggie Hassan was not successful in her re-election campaign, and we wound up right. with a new governor, which, right. you know, obviously, elections are wild cards all the time. Yep. How much would that affect all this if a brand new governor were to come in? Uh, probably not much at all. Not because, at all? Because this is in statute now. This is in statute. So okay. the departments and agencies... So are, a new are, governor wouldn't be able to dicker with it as such? No, the new governor could uh, could ask for you know, a change in legislation or, or, or make that happen. Well, start but the, the whole new process governor, again, yeah. any, any new governor, I would have to believe, would be thrilled with getting better information mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Well, you know, getting, it would seem to make sense, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, because goals, I think it's too much to expect any, yes. any governor to grasp the whole thing no. the first year in, I, I can't imagine. I mean, no, it's too I, huge. If, if, if I was the governor, I would, you know, knowing how many department yeah. heads and agency yeah. heads yeah, he's going to talk huge. to, I'd want him to come in with all this information, which I spoke about before, mm -hmm. special needs, metrics, barriers, mm -hmm. goals, objectives, reorganization. Help me understand what it is you need. You know, where are your problems? How can I help you? You know, how can I craft this, this budget better to help help make this happen? That's the kind of conversations we want to see the governors, our governors have with their agency and department heads based on this very, very fundamental information. And I've tried to make the bill not overly prescriptive uh, and just ask for basic fundamental information, good management, what I would characterize as management 101 in, in information. Mm -hmm. So better work product for everybody. Mm. Let me tell you a little story here to make the, to make the point. Yeah, may I definitely. Do, may I yeah. do that? Yeah, of course. In my first term on, mm -hmm. uh, in my first term on, on house finance, um, I can remember, you know, one meeting where we had a commissioner in, uh, in, in front of the committee. And I asked the commissioner, because I'm truly interested in, in this particular department and, and its issues and problems, what are your priorities? Where do you really have, uh, you know, really strong needs? And I ask that question because I would like to help that department and mm -hmm. help that commissioner fund whatever it is that he wanted to do. He didn't answer the question. Didn't answer the question. Why? To this day, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe a protecting something? I don't know why. Wow. But my question was in the, was in the context of how can I, I want to help you? Mm -hmm. So with this, with House Bill 657, all the departments and agency heads would have to identify and prioritize. Is that commissioner still a commissioner? Yes, that commissioner really? is still a, still a commissioner. And is he? A good commissioner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, is he no. still we as have, reticent? We do have a lot of. You know, we do have a lot of good commissioners. There's no question. Oh about yeah, it. no. But is that commissioner it, still as reticent as he was then? Uh, no. Or, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brought him but, around. But but now here in the bill, we're asking we're asking for tell me what your special or problematic needs are, and yeah. the bill says they are expected to be few, and prioritized. So now think of yourself as being the governor or on a finance committee. My gosh, wouldn't it be helpful to you, to know what those special needs are and when what your priorities are? Well, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know? How much are, I don't know, maybe this is an unfair question. How much are commissioners, agency heads and such, how much are they motivated by the, the political part of it, by the partisan politics part of it? I think they all are, Kathy, yeah? as, as, I, as I witnessed to some extent. Some uh, much more so than, than, than others. Um, some are uh, very, very candid, very honest. Uh, are they in the with, majority with the, or minority? With, with the, with the finance committee. Um, I think in the, in, the, in the majority. Yeah? Yeah. Well, and and there, there are some that are, uh, that are reticent. And uh, when you're on, on We're finance. We're being polite, you, aren't we, when we yeah, say reticent? You, you know, yeah, you, you know who's not giving you the whole, the whole story. You're not getting the whole answer to the question. And, um, but there are some who are just straight up transparent is all get out. Want to name any or is that too controversial? No, I don't think that would be all right. helpful. But, that, how would you try to put uh, you on at least no, one spot through the show? That would be but you know, I, I know some who are I uphold in very high regard yeah. because they are so, so honest, high integrity folks. And they'll tell it like it is. 
Well, thank you very much. We like the words, tell it like it is. Well, yes, there you go. <laughs> because now it, it helps make a decision upon what's, you know, what's, what's, what's really needed there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it, it varies. It, it varies, you know, across, as you would expect, in any organization. Well, yeah. I mean, picture, you got 45, yeah. 46 people coming to you. You know, you're going to have a, you're going to get a different story all, all, along, all, all along the way. And they are, they are in, influenced. They are certainly influenced by, you know, the governor style mm -hmm. and the instructions that the governor, well, yeah, the governor has provided. Well, yeah, that would have to so, be, yeah, yeah. So they kind of follow that to Yeah, to, there would have to, to be to some, some of that. Some, I mean, especially some, if some people degree. would like to be That's reappointed, right. that kind of thing, yeah. too. You know, I, I've enjoyed it immensely. You, yeah. You, it, finances, I think, it's the, it's the premier committee. Yeah. Um, have you been on that all job. along? No, f no f uh, two terms, four two years. Two terms. Yeah. Uh, you get to b uh, build a relationship with a lot of people in, s in state government. We've got a lot of good folks who are running agencies and, and departments. We really, we really do, and and they're and they're working hard at what they're trying to do. Well, that's good to hear. Oh no, they're really they yeah, are because I mean, are sometimes we read the papers and you know you want to play the no, hero. No, are they always on, doing on the best the, the best possible on. thing? You know, no. I think they you know their governments the government can can be very bureaucratic. Yeah, uh, doesn't yeah. think the same yeah, way as the bit, private yeah. sector, and so yeah. that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to change the uh, change change the thinking. You know, let's be a little bit more creative. Let's be a little bit more innovative. You do know? you think that in itself will attract more people? more people like yourself to, to uh, run for the legislature or to consider working in, oh, there's in no, government there's no, there's no, Kathy, wouldn't you prefer to, to, to work in an organization or in a company or, or in a business where creativity is valued, mm. yeah. where your ideas yeah. are valued, where innovation mm -hmm. is valued, where change is readily accepted? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you feel more comfortable? I oh, would. Positively. I mean, some years yeah. back, and now I'm turning back the clock a long right, time. Right, right. Um, I was, a, I guess you'd have to call me a contractor to right. one of the state agencies. Yes. And the reason that, that I was invited to work with them right. was to try to get a brand new program off right. the ground and have a lot of new ideas. And within the small agency that I was working, as I said, that's why I was hired. So right. I got terrific yes. support. But with other agencies that I had to interact with, wow, I mean, there was some pushback like you didn't even want to know about yes. um, because they saw it as threatening to their I know. bailiwicks I know. as such. And it was very, very hard to do end runs around them to make yeah. things happen sometimes. You know, I've, 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 I've come to know some state employees in different, in different agencies who... Uh, What's the right word to use here? Feel maybe you may maybe boxed in. Um, well, I would think held, anybody held who's very energetic or who you know, has a lot of ideas and, and would. Has, has a lot of yeah. a lot of ideas. Yeah, and, I you would know, think that, so. It, it, it's it's sometimes not really. What, but let's let's let that talent loose. Mm -hmm. Let's let it roar. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let those ideas. Yeah, because sometimes come on I out. mean, I don't mean to sound negative. No. But sometimes. Again, you know, there's that turf protection going yes, on, right. and people see yeah. somebody who's who's bringing about some changes or trying to create some new things as threatening, right. and and they get, I no. mean, they really kind of dig in and. I want to set expectations. Maybe not publicly yes, fight yeah. it, but certainly make it a little more difficult to come about. One of my side objectives here with this, frankly, is to uh, is to is to change expectations. Yeah. Expectations. Uh, among state employees that yes your ideas your creativity your innovation is, is valued it's welcomed and here's one here's here's one way to, to vent it to get it to let mm -hmm. it out to, mm -hmm. to, to let it let it come forward boy this state can be a, a real engine if you oh, know and a real be. example yeah. you know oh, for yeah. other, for other oh, yeah we have the we talent. do a lot of things yeah. well yeah. there's no question yeah, about we it we have the talent you know our budget process is is uh, is, is great and we have know? the Yankee way of thinking that like don't yeah. just blow money yeah. now you know Believe it or not, we are like in the end zone here time-wise. I'm kind oh of craning because okay. the clock is All right. <laughs> on the other side of some equipment. So if people see me going like this, I'm really not doing an Igor okay. impression. All right. um, I, I opened the show saying we knew that there'd be at least three big hot topics in 2014. And again, you know, they're back again. Medicaid yes. expansion, an increase in the state gas tax, and expanded gambling are all going to be back on the burner. Right. And... Um, 
obviously there's going to be some battles. Do you see other big issues this year? And is there anything you want to comment on? Or, um, because I'm going to kind of use most of the I've time got... now to let you close, anything you think people should be doing, including with your own right. legislation. I, um... I guess the two things that, that that come to mind. You mentioned the you mentioned the gas tax. Yeah. And uh, yes, that's a uh, that's a it's going to be back. That yeah. hits a nerve with me yeah. uh, with me personally. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. In this in this last year, uh, I did uh, put forward an amendment to increase the when uh, the gas tax. Mm -hmm. um, the in initial proposal by a, a representative from uh, Nashua, I thought, was uh, grossly too high. Yes, it was, John. But uh, we do, in fact, have a real need from a roadway, bridge. Transportation funding. From a transportation yeah. network point of view, we, yeah. we, we really do. So I had proposed a much uh, smaller one. Uh, it didn't make it. And I made that proposal. What, what drove me to that was my interest in uh, the state's economy and growing mm -hmm. the state's economy. And a good, strong, solid infrastructure helps attract businesses here. Mm -hmm. So that was my primary, my primary motivation. There's another bill coming back this year, uh, sponsored, I believe, by Senator Rausch. I happen to be a co-sponsor on it. Uh, it needs some work. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. One of the problems with the gas tax, Kathy, is is uh, some of the monies collected from it go to different. I know. They get diverted. To, to I know. Places. So somehow, how do we how do we solve that? If we take that money, if we don't have that money go to them, well, then where are they going to? Where else mm -hmm. is that department or agency going to get the funds that has gotten mm -hmm. past my gas tax? So we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place there. Uh, I think there needs to be some movement on it. We well, have, language to dedicate funds. Yeah, we have it. We what, last time we had an increase was what in uh, 1991. Long time, yeah. Wow, 22, 23 years ago. <coughs> the other thing that's going to be a big topic this year is the repeal of the death penalty. Oh yeah. I happen to be a co-sponsor uh, on on that bill. But that will not affect Addison, correct? No, no, Good. no, not Good. not at all. Good. Uh, and for and those a, of you who forget, yes. Addison was. Um, the person who who murdered um, Officer Briggs, Briggs in Manchester. Right, yeah. yeah. No, that would not do that. But, Good. Uh, Good. No, so that's a that's a whole nother whole nother, whole nother subject. So yeah. there'll be a lot, a lot on that. Uh, gambling. Yes. You know, you, you, you're, I'm, I'm not a yes. I'm not a supporter we of that. I believe there are other yeah. ways to, yeah. to, to generate to, to generate to generate revenue. But um, well, I'm sure there'll be but, a very uh, spirited that's, battle that's once not again. The, yeah. I don't think that's the New Hampshire way. I agree so, with you. No, and no, I don't no. like the legislation that has um, received some committee support to um, bring Bino into the state either. That could be a whole subject of another show. Oh, I haven't heard about that one. Oh, well, we'll talk afterwards. All right, okay. All right, John, believe it or not, we are well, down you, to down. literally 10 seconds. So I want to thank you. You have been so kind. Oh, well, you have thank been you great so being very, very here. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. And we'll get you back okay, once thank the you. session gets rolling. Okay. Everybody, I don't know about for you, but the hour for me flew. Um, but the big message to come out of this with is that we have a state legislator right here from Bedford who's really trying to make a difference and uh, keep track of that legislation um, and make the appropriate phone calls when it comes to that. Yes. And we'll remind you here on this show as well. Meanwhile, there'll be other things to watch too. So don't be afraid to pick up the phone to call John or our other state legislators from Bedford who'd be willing to hear from you and those of you outside of Bedford to your legislators as well. It'll be a big year. There'll be some momentous decisions, and we will keep talking about them. We will keep telling it like it is. Thanks for watching this time. See you soon. Great holidays, everybody. Bye-bye.